At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is the Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today, we are welcoming Jefferson Harmon, and he is a dream interpreter. He's also an artist and a musician, so really tapping into that creativity. But, you know, dream interpretation and what your dreams have in store is really a topic that I think has crossed everybody's mind. So I'm excited to learn what do our dreams mean and everything else and see where we go with it. So welcome, Jefferson. Well, thank you, Christine. It's, it's, it's great to see you. Thanks for having me. And thanks for, for being here and uh, joining me from out of town and taking yeah. time to do this podcast and your short visit here in Los Angeles. So Loving it, yeah. Yeah. Great well, city. Um, well, glad, to, glad you're here. What I'd like to start with mm-hmm. is a little bit about how did you even get into dream interpretation, you know? Cause yeah. okay, your other, your other part, and I know that you're here in town and you're, you're performing as a musician and you're doing, you know, also doing yeah. a talk and, you know, you have a forthcoming book coming out and you're working on that while you're here as well. But, um, you know, where did this all start for you? When I was three. Oh, okay. Yeah, I had a nightmare when I was three years old and it was really intense. I was being chased through a house and, uh, by a monster. And okay. It um, basically made me hyper aware of my dream state at, as a toddler. And wow. yeah, and it, it really woke me up to what, like, what is this? And of course, at three, I couldn't yeah. articulate anything, you know, but I was, you know, I told my mom I had a bad dream and she's like, oh, it's okay. It's just a nightmare. It'll go away. And it didn't. So and, it was repetitive. Oh, no, no. It's just, I couldn't get it out of my head. I never had wow. it again. Thank God. But the um the dream itself uh took place in a house and it started you know how some dreams start like a movie Mm -hmm. and you see a scene so it started with the front of the house and then suddenly i was inside of it and when i was inside of it was when i started being chased by this creature and um the next day we were driving and i'm in the back of the station wagon and we passed the house and of course, I'd never seen it before. And I just was terrified because I was like, wait, that's where the monster lives. And so nothing my mother could tell me would calm me down about that. And no, because you're like, I never even seen this house before. Yeah. And now mom, dad, we're driving by it. You and, know? and imagine a three-year-old trying to, to say this, yeah, you know, with uh, limited vocabulary. With limited vocabulary. And and you know, and the adults just kind of pacifying you and saying, you know, it's okay, it's just a dream, it'll pass. And, uh, and so I kept it to myself, that like, like, what is this? I was terrified of it, and, yeah. and it lasted a long time. So it made me hyper aware of my dream state from a very young age. I never studied Freud or Jung, mm-hmm. specifically because I'm writing the book, and I wanted my work to be just mine, just pure mm-hmm. what, I, what I know and what I've known since I was a kid. And what happened was, you know, years went by, and I started to be able to really recognize that there was something going on here. It was more than just, I had dreams. There was a correlation between the dream and my waking state. There was a correlation between my dream and, and things I didn't understand that I was learning. So it was like school for myself, mm-hmm. but I was the one learning and wondering who the teacher was. Interesting. Who's the conversation with? You know, if you go into a movie, there's a screenwriter, there are actors, there's a director, there's a projectionist. Yeah. There's the audience, you know, in a dream, you're watching the movie, but which one are you? Yeah. So I, I didn't know. I had to discover that. And what I realized was if there's a story, there's a writer. Hmm. If there's a writer, this is a conversation. And once I understood that, then it started to really gel for me. And I realized that this is not just pictures. This is not just sensations emotions this is actually meaningful there's healing in this Absolutely. and i'm very young as i'm understanding this it just i couldn't articulate it at the time but i sensed it and then over time i learned to articulate it wow. and yeah and then i took that understanding and i applied it to other people my friends would say oh, i had a dream and i'd say oh tell me it and i would interpret the dream for them and they would be you know 
grateful and then refer me to another friend who had a dream as soon as that someone said, oh, I had a dream. Oh, tell, tell Jefferson. And then I would interpret their dreams. So I started like accumulating this experience of interpreting dreams for other people. Then I started doing it for total strangers. Mm. And I started doing it as a, uh, as a professional, you know, yeah. offering private sessions, doing workshops, teaching it. Because uh, it does no good if I'm the only one who knows how to do it. So yeah. I need to teach my, my uh, some people call it a gift. I, for me, it's a skill because it's something that was there that, you that developed. I developed over many, many years of time. Yeah. And I studied teachers, you know, I didn't, I, again, I stayed away from Freud and Jung specifically because society saw them as the dream workers, that they yeah. were the people who, who, um, who detailed it for us in the modern era. And so I stayed away from their stuff and I gravitated toward people like Carolyn Mace, Deepak mm -hmm. Chopra, mm -hmm. Wayne Dyer, Louise Hay, Ian Van Zandt. And those authors helped me to fully, or I, Abraham Hicks, mm -hmm. that helps me to fully articulate what I do. And, um... Well, and from a completely different perception. Yeah. I mean, like the time that that Freud and Carl Jung was around, you yes. know, and Jung being a student of, of Freud, right? You know, and so that that's very limited perspective, and doesn't mean that they their their work wasn't very impactful and and can be very Absolutely. applicable yeah. to today. Mm -hmm. But you know. Life is different. Society is different. The world is different. Absolutely. You know, the yes. way that we in interact and engage in technology and information mm -hmm. and our types of relationships that we have and, yeah. and even the roles in society. And so it's, it's, you know, what was once, but now in a different way, in a different level, yeah. you need something that's more, you know, and, and, and I believe we've been in this constant state of evolution, right? Absolutely. And awakening more of our spiritual gifts, right? Yes. And so things like the law of attraction and, and that you said, you know, and, and studying Deepak Chopra and meditation and the power of your mind and the power of, you know, like yes. it's, 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 from my point of view, it's, you know, it's not discrediting them, but it's like taking the next level. Well, what I say is that, you know, when people look at dreams, they're like, well, what does this mean? Mm -hmm. They want to know what the, what the symbols mean in the dreams. And, and what I say is uh, no symbol has a one size fits all meaning Yeah. because symbols themselves evolve. Yeah. They evolve with us. And they're also dependent on our personal point of view, which is based on our reality. Mm -hmm. People talk about, well, this is reality, this is physical reality. What does that mean? Because yeah. yours and mine are entirely different. We don't experience the world the same way. So when I see a symbol, it's based on my relationship to the symbol, what it means. And it's also, it's specific to the dream you're having in that moment in your life. Yeah. You can have a dream about the same symbol multiple times throughout your life, and it will mean something compl completely different each time. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, how you're feeling towards it, right? Exactly you know? right. Exactly and, right. And that's that's interesting that you know how symbols evolve over time. I just actually watched the Da Vinci Code yeah. uh, uh, last night, actually, <laughs> and uh, and in it, you know, there's a there's one scene for those who haven't seen it or don't remember, but the the professor is you know just talking to the students at Harvard about yes. about symbols and showing like imagery, and they're they're having these reactions of like oh, that's a negative symbol, or this is that, or that. And then mm -hmm. he's like, well, not to this society in this age in this period, exactly. or to these people that were born here versus these people that are born there, because that symbol can have very different meanings. So anyways, that, that, and, it's and just then, interesting that you would bring that up, and it was, you know. But let me take that further. Imagine you're a student in that professor's class, mm -hmm. and you have no idea what these symbols mean. Yeah. You're going in there to learn what they mean, and then you have a dream about one of them. Yeah. You're going to apply your own meaning to it. Yeah. It's going to, it's like an ink blot. It's going to represent something to you personally, or it becomes a journey of discovery. Like why did I never knew that symbol? Why did I dream that? And now here it is in my class. So these are ways of discovering ourselves. That's what I understood over time is that the conversation is with your higher self. Mm -hmm. It's with energy. It's with the universe. It's with God, spirit, whatever you want to call it. You can call it Louise. It doesn't matter. It's that you are honoring the fact that there is a conversation. You and I are looking at each other eye to eye right now. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, we are, you know, our, our attention is riveted in this conversation. If we were sitting at a diner and a, a waitress came over to take our order, then one of us would look toward the waitress and the other person would wait mm -hmm. until the attention came back. And that's what the universe does. It waits for us to be ready to pay attention to the conversation. 
Hmm. That's why our dreams are so important because most people will either tell me they don't remember their dreams. I hear that every. I was workshop. just going to ask you. I'm like, okay, there's so workshop. many people. There, there, yeah. There's a, there's a collective few people that I hear talking about their dreams, yes. and they're like this, and they remember them so vividly. Yes. And like you describing a dream from when you were three, it's like it stays with you. The impact's so big that you can remember the details of it. Yeah. You can remember what the house looked like. I, you know I that you can. That's all pictures of it to yeah, this day. You know, so you could identify it. Whereas some people, like, I hear either, oh, I don't know if I dream, I don't recall my dreams, exactly. or I recall it for, like, you know, two minutes right when I wake up, and mm -hmm. if I don't write it down or, or share it, I it's gone, yep. you know, and... So what, what, why is it like that for the different people? Have you, have you had any kind of um, uh, theories on that? Absolutely. So from my work, what I've discovered over many years of teaching is that the reason that people don't remember their dreams is stress. Hmm. And there is a survival mechanism that's built in to the human body or the human psyche where when you are looking to, um, to deal with the stress, your body automatically kind of, it, it, it brings things in. It, it, be, it kind of cocoons itself. Mm. There's a way in which it protects itself. The same way like a fight or flight response. You either run or you freeze, you stay. Like you know instinctively what to do. So if somebody has an overwhelming thing going on in their life, a move, a divorce, changing schools when they're young, um, uh, trauma, abuse, mm -hmm. anything like that, um, what happens is they shut down their dream state momentarily. It's a survival mechanism. So they're not dreaming or they're, they're just dreaming. Not? We're, okay. Yeah, well, we're yeah, all I was dreaming. Like, I was like, I feel like everybody's dreaming, There's, but they're not remembering. No, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor, uh, yeah, no, but, no. but I have the, the, the little research I've done on it. I've discovered only one condition where you literally, if, if, if they monitor you while you're sleeping, you show no brainwave activity of, of dreaming. Other than that, the vast majority of the population, everybody dreams, but they don't remember them. And the reason they don't remember them is because your mind can only handle so much mm -hmm. before it becomes overwhelming. And so it calms down by not adding more detail than what you already have. So let's say your, your, your parents are divorcing and everything in the household is stressful all day long. And then you go to bed. Well, that's where you're going to rest. So yeah. the first thing your body's going to do is it's going to shut down your dream state memory, let's put it that mm. way, like the memory of your dreams, so that you are not adding that information onto what is already an overwhelming day. Interesting. And then you have that experience. And then over time, you, you know, because the stress goes on for a time, you don't, you don't have that one day and then the next day it's all better. Yeah. So that's lasting for weeks, months, years sometimes. And you have this experience of not remembering your dreams. And then over time, you convince yourself that you don't remember them because mm. it's like, well, last night I didn't remember my dreams. Well, I didn't dream last night. Well, I didn't dream last night. And then over time it becomes, I don't remember my dreams. Now it's an affirmation. Yeah. And a belief is nothing more than a thought you have repetitively until it takes hold in your physiology. Mm. Because every thought is a physical molecule. It's hormones. It's chemistry. It's literally saturating your body. Louise Hay said that feelings are thoughts in motion in the body. So you have the thought and the chemistry goes on, on mission to a particular part of the body and sends a message. That's how it works, to the best of my understanding. So if the message is, I don't remember my dreams, your body now produces the chemical reactions. Again, I'm not a scientist, it's yeah. just my understanding, my layman understanding of this, that the chemical reaction is that you then suppress the memory of your dream. Hmm. And that the reversal of that lies in the affirmation. Why would you say, I don't remember my dreams if you want to remember them? And why would you want to remember them? Because it's physically healthier. It's spiritually and mentally healthier to have more information than less. See, once I was just gotten, gonna ask you, what, what's the benefit of it? You know, yeah, if what, it's Once like, you've gotten beyond the trauma, how do you heal from that? Mm -hmm. What's the discovery after that? How do you follow that path? Well, one of the treasure maps lies in your dreams. So you have to have that information in order to get the full picture. If you're mm -hmm. talking mind, body, spirit, it starts in spirit, it, it, it comes in through the mind and is translated to the body. The body is the result. So if you want to find out what's going on outside of the body, the dreams are the first place to go because that's your connection to energy, 
to metaphor, to symbolism, to the language that you get to speak that doesn't have any physical property to it. Physical mm -hmm. laws don't apply. You can jump off a building and survive. You can fly. You can go to another planet. Mm. There are all these things that you can do in a dream you can't do otherwise. You can take a person you're having an argument with and insert someone else, you know, put an actor or an actress in there and have them play the part so that it's less personal and you can have the same discussion without the emotion behind it and then witness it a different way. All of so, these so things I'm are symbolic and it's just a metaphoric conversation that is healthier. And so you're kind of what you're you're describing now is more about being able to m manipulate your dreams in a little bit of way, like lucid dreaming. Well, right? lucid dreaming is one thing, but you I know, mean, like, but you, I mean, but to be able to put that person there and to have an actor step in. Oh no, I'm talking it. about subconsciously. Okay, you can over time learn to do that. And that's lucid dreaming, where you're yeah. the director. Remember the movie theater I said. Yeah. Are you the person watching passively, or are you directing, or are you just the projectionist and you're just putting it on there for whatever you know for whoever else comes to see it? There's there's all different ways that you can approach that movie. Mm -hmm. You can be in it. You can be multiple multiple characters in it. How many actors and actresses have we seen on TV or movies that play multiple roles? Yeah. There's no reason you can't do that. You can be in the audience and in the dream. You can literally watch yourself as yourself in a dream mm -hmm. and, and experience both feelings simultaneously. That's the beauty of it. Because it gives you information you don't have during the day. Mm -hmm. Whatever you perceive of reality, your dreams hold all the information that your reality, quote unquote, doesn't hold. So, you get, so what you're basically saying is that you can get so much more insight into where you are at, a connection to your higher soul, the universe, maybe some true intentions, true motives, and also some, some blocks or emotions that Absolutely. might be going on. Yes. So it has the ability when you learn to decipher it properly that mm -hmm. you can, it can be a gateway into your inner self so that yes. you can move beyond that or use that information to empower yourself. Absolutely, because that's where the information's coming from. It's the conversation between your earthbound self and your higher self. And there's always this loop going where you're, you know, one is sending a message to the other back and forth Beautiful. constantly. And as that's happening, that's 24 seven, the same way that intuition is. It doesn't stop because it's Thursday. It's there all the time. It's just that we don't pay attention to it because we're, focused on the stress in front of us, the bill we have to pay, the traffic we're in, the argument we're having, the uh, someone just passed, uh, what will I do without them? All of these things that get in front of us, mm -hmm. you know, something as simple as just, oh, I forgot to feed the cat. And we're focusing on something other than what's happening in that moment. And the present moment is the only time of any power. So your dreams are all about bringing your attention into the present moment to focus on where your point of healing is. Interesting. And you were kind of alluding to some ways of which that you can start if there's those people that are watching and listening that are like, ah, I hardly remember my dreams or I don't remember my dreams. So, you know, one of the theories that you have is that stress plays a big role yes. in the blocking of your, your memory of your dreams. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it would be working, you know, in life on, you know, some de-stressing techniques or some other ways that you can you can shift your stress level in your life or cope with your stress better. Mm -hmm. And then you also mentioned something that um, was interesting, the affirmation part of it. Yes. Like, you know, about this self-made affirmation that, yes. you know, you're constantly telling yourself you don't remember your dream, so you don't. But so the inverse of that, if you start to tell yourself, I remember to remember my dreams, is, is, is that one of... It, can it be that simple? And you, well, actually it's simpler. You take two words out of that sentence. I remember to remember. You don't have to remember to remember anything. You just remember my, your dreams. Mm -hmm. I remember my dreams. Mm -hmm. Make it a present moment statement, make it positive, and then watch what changes. Write it down, put it on a card, put it on your refrigerator, put your bathroom mirror, put it on a note and put it under your pillow every night. Read the note before you go to bed. What you're doing is you're, you're programming mm -hmm. your mind to change the thought. Again, a belief is nothing more than a thought you've had repetitively. Mm -hmm. So have a new repetitive thought and then watch what changes. It literally changes the physiology in your body to accommodate the new paradigm, which is I do remember my dreams. Okay. So just to recap on that. So you're saying that 
grab a note card or some piece of paper, mm -hmm. write it down, yep. write it, say it, say it out loud, yeah, don't, read don't it. just write it down because that's like taking it out of your head, putting it on paper. Mm -hmm. Take the card now and that becomes your talisman. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's your, your crystal or, or your rune so that you have it in front of you all the time. And, you know, put it as a note on your phone, put it on your things to do today pad, put it on your calendar on your phone mm -hmm. with, a, with a little alarm to let you know, oh, I, I remember my dreams and just keep that thought going. And I, I've, I do sessions for people on a regular basis who, when they came to me, did not remember their dreams at all for decades. Wow. Yeah. And how quickly does something like that shift with it when they're Depends doing, on the person. When they're doing how open it? are you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it can be just as quickly as even that night to, you know, maybe it's weeks or Absolutely. months. Absolutely. And, right? and that has happened too, where, where I've said to some people come to my workshops and they tell me in the workshop, and I've never met them before, they came with a friend, they weren't expecting to come, and they never dreamed, but they had a dream the night before. Mm -hmm. Or they'll tell me, you know, I had, I had one woman who told me that she had a recurring nightmare since she was a child that plagued her all the way into adulthood. She came to my workshop, I talked to her for 15 minutes, and she never had it again. There's a way that we program ourselves that we are not aware of how powerful our thoughts are and how they literally create our experience, which we then call reality. Mm. But the reality itself is flexible. And then we don't realize it because like the body, it becomes more solid over time. You start out very soft and squishy and bendable. I mean, you know, you can take a baby's foot and touch it to its forehead. Try and do that now. Unless, yeah. unless you're an expert at yoga, yeah. You're not going to be able to do that because the body in the meantime has become more solid. No, I can barely bend over. <laughs> and, and, and same here. And that's coming from the hardened beliefs that we hold on to. That is the body translating thought into physical experience. So your inability to bend comes from your inflexibility in your thoughts. Hmm. I love that. That's why dreams are so important, because they get you thinking more. They get you thinking what else is possible. They get you involved in your own healing, your own life, your own path. What is my passion? What do I want to do? I ask that question of people that I'm doing card readings for or dream interpretations for. What's your passion? And of an amazingly high percentage of them cannot tell. Oh, well, again, almost everybody, you know, yeah. in or... They think that what they really want is something that if you ask them the question behind that, well, why do you want that? They have no idea how exactly. to answer that question, you know? So it's like, okay, this is what I want or this is what I'm passionate about. For what reason? Why? Yes. You know? And exactly. then they're like, why am I here? You know? The ultimate question, why am I here? And what did they say at the Oracle at Delphi? Know yourself. Mm -hmm. But people don't. Yeah. They're too distracted by what's around them. They're too distracted by their phones, by what's for sale by mm -hmm. the marketing that's constantly around us trying to grab our attention. Bombarding everywhere, everywhere. That, that people aren't even, the majority of people can't even recall their dreams Ex because of that exactly stress right. experience. Exactly right. That no. They don't understand that that is a stress itself. Yeah. And that then distracts them from their dreams. But the same way it distracts them from their intuition. They're tied. You can't have one without the other. I was just going to say that it feels like what you're saying is that that your dreams are that access point to that uh, sleeping intuition that maybe if somebody's not as aware of that and mm -hmm. open to their six senses during the day, that that's a gateway that they can have yes. that and understand better. But it was also interesting that you shared with me that just a moment ago and kind of glossed over, but I want to bring it up is that a woman had come and she was yes. plagued by a dream for, mm -hmm. you know, since she was a child and you spent 15 minutes talking to her. So in that, that dream went away. Yeah. Now, so is this one of the powers of a dream interpretation is the ability to also, you know, shift things in your life? Without a doubt, because the recurring dreams that you have are, have an origin point. You had the first one at some point. And if you look at the origin point, then you look at the next time you had it, what you find is, and I know this from 30 years of doing this, mm -hmm. what you find is the stress you're having in the second moment mirrors the stress in the first moment. Mm -hmm. And that's why the dream recurs. Interesting. That so, reminds me of the uh, like a Grace and Frankie episode where she was <laughs> having a... Uh, Gra Grace show. was having, it's in the last season, but she was having a... 
um, a panic attack. Mm -hmm. And they were chasing back the panic attack because Frankie was dying or was supposed to be dying. And um, it was back to her first moment that yes. she had that when her dad was dying. Mm -hmm. and, and so it was like these these like three panic attacks that she had in her life yeah. were all tied into her father's death. And the same would be true of a recurring dream. You would have whatever the message of the dream is, you didn't get it. And so the universe repeats it. It's like, the, you know, the, the, the first the universe taps you on the shoulder, then it knocks on your door, then it rings your doorbell, then it sends you a singing gorilla gram because you aren't getting the message. And so the dream will either be exactly the same or it will change the location, the characters, mm. something about it will shift. Well, you didn't get it the first time. Let's change this here and there. We'll redirect this scene and then send it to you again and see if you get that. And, you know, and ultimately what I find my experience because of the fact that I've been doing this for so long is that they don't get it until they come to me. Mm. And then when I tell them what it means based on their history, that's when it stops. Because once you get the message, the dream is no longer necessary. Mm, interesting. And then the recurring dream stops. So I work, that's my private sessions are very much about that. You have a place where you're stuck in your life. You just have no idea how to move forward. You have a phobia you can't stand and you can't seem to come, you know, overcome it. You have a fear of something, anxiety, depression. Yeah. Anxiety means you're too focused on the future. Depression means you're too focused on the past. Yeah. That's a simplistic way to put it. But essentially, but true. if your attention is in, you know, if, if you're worrying, you're not in the present moment. Yeah, and Therefore, you're not trusting. And what people don't get is if you're not in the present moment, you're powerless. You are the victim of everything around you. You are the person who is now observing what the world is doing. And all you can do is either observe or respond after the fact of something happening. That means that you rely entirely on the external world to mm. give you information rather than you being the provider. Again, what's your passion? What are you here to do? Yeah. What's your gift? What are you here to offer? That's mm. what you'd need your dream state for. Yeah. And, and like you said, you know, it's an interpretation of reality anyways. And so that interpretation can be so vast and different at any given yes. moment there's what millions of if not billions of bits of information bombarding your your senses oh, yeah. what are you paying attention to mm -hmm. you know uh, what are you focused on is it you know looking at me and my full, whole face is it my eyes is it the background behind me exactly. is it the words and the things that you're going to say but like whatever you're focusing on is going to give you a perception of your reality and, and if you notice too as we're moving into the age of aquarius People are becoming more aware of this sort of thing. And so the marketing has gotten so much intent, more intense. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you've been in New York City, but if you go to Times Square, what it used to be was, you know, a lot of incandescent lighting and, and you know, colorful and all of that. Now there are these giant screens, all, all these computer screens. They're constantly in motion. They are brighter than the sun. And mm -hmm. it's actually like daylight when you drive through at night because everything is so overly bright like unnaturally bright and that's the problem is it's unnatural and it literally plays on your psyche it's like oh you're paying attention to yourself we can't have that yeah. you need to pay attention to us because we're trying to sell you something and it's literally you know you drive down a, a road at night a highway at night and you see a lit up billboard that changes because it's just a computer screen it's you don't even get to read what you're reading before it's changed into something else Boom, boom, boom. Attention yeah. span is just out the window yeah. because you can't possibly keep up with everything. The posts on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, like the, everything wants your attention in a moment. Yeah. It's all clickbait. And, and you are basically either connected to that and then just waiting for the next thing to come in, which is constant, and you're being barraged by it. You're being beaten over the head with it. Or you're able to silence that all. Mm. You're able to quiet your mind. You can close your eyes. Yeah. You know, when you dream, uh, there, I listened to an Abraham Hicks talk recently, and she said the most exquisite thing. Um, it was, um, are your eyes open when you dream? And the person said, no. And she said, and yet you see. Mm. That to me is wisdom. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So going back to interpreting dreams, so now we've we've talked a little bit about the power of a dream, right? Mm -hmm. And in what messages and information and how you can be one or all of these components and players within the dream. Yeah. And 
how it can tie into your daily life and can tie into traumas or other fears or things that you're living out. Mm -hmm. And it can also connect you to your higher wisdom and power and, and also bigger, larger consciousness. Yes. And then a little bit about why people don't dream, mm -hmm. right? You know, and one of the strategies to help people or two strategies to help people dream. Now, when you're, what about the dream interpretation in, in general? You know, so what are some things that you see kind of play out within people's dreams? Are there patterns that, you know, as far as that, I know you said that every person is different and unique, mm -hmm. but are there patterns or themes that you see that seem to be repetitive? Oh, absolutely. Show up in yeah, because we, we all grow up in, in a particular society, in a place, you know. Yeah, you, we're like the tarot I, deck, you know, it's a, the major arcana is still holding its its ground, you know, how many thousands of years later? And, <laughs> and, and that's one of the things to consider is the history of symbolism. Yeah. Are you, are you seeing a symbol because of its history, because it has something to teach you in the present moment? Mm -hmm. Or are you seeing it new? You know, are, yeah. are you getting a new version of it in your psyche to give it another layer of meaning for the rest of the world? That's the other thing. If you, if you keep all of that to yourself, it will help you. What if you share it? Who else does it help? Mm -hmm. I mean, all of the stories that are the most important to us are the ones where people share their pain. They share their trauma. They tell us, you know, the biographies where people tell us, these fantastic lives where they had overwhelming joy and overwhelming pain and survived. Yeah. Those are the things that are the most compelling. So if we are able to share what we learn from these things, then it's, it's, more, it's more compelling for us personally and for the people that we share it with. It literally heals them. Us being healed by this, as we are healed by this, that helps people around us just because it changes our energy. Yeah. When you become more kind, when you become more intuitive, more, more, more wise, everyone you come into contact with is affected by that. Yeah. When you hold that back and you don't go through that yourself, they're affected by that too. Mm -hmm. if, you are, if you live by your stresses, you're stressing the people out, uh, around you. If you live by your healing, you're healing the people around you. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it's just osmosis. Yeah. You walk into a room, you know, you, you go to a party. It's like one of those old Mary Tyler Moore parties where every, everybody's just sitting around and nothing's happening and everybody's wondering, why am I here? And then someone walks in the door, you know, uh, Ted, right, walks in the door with a big smile on his face and all of a sudden there's all this joy in the room. Everybody's having a good time. And that comes from the fact that that new person's energy is not in that same place, that mm -hmm. they've learned something about life that the others don't necessarily in that moment hold on to and that they are therefore able to bring that to the party literally and change it just mm. by their appearance, just because they're, you know, a good looking person or they have a beautiful smile or they're witty and they're funny and they just get everybody up and moving and dancing. And all of a sudden the entire party is great yeah. because one person brought their energy in the room. That's what we should be for each other. All the stuff that's going on right now in the world, all the upheaval is is begging for this. Mm -hmm. We're looking for community in order to be able to heal. And yet the world as, as a political entity, as a religious entity, you know, these, these human constructs that literally pit us against each other, they are polarizing us to keep us from that. Yeah. When the only way to heal is to connect. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button, the red one. You know the one. Just press it, little like. All right, enjoy the rest of this content. That's what addiction is about. Addiction is not about, you know, healing from a substance. It's healing from a lack of connection. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So with that being said, you know, one of the most powerful things that people can get out of dream interpretation yeah. is... A, a better sense of their self. Well, I want to go back and, and answer it, your first your, yeah. your question before because I don't I don't think I really fully got to it. I went off on a tangent. Um, the symbols themselves are in some part written in stone, if you will, because they were carved in ancient Egypt and Rome. Okay, in stone, <laughs> and we we grow up learning that. We also learn how to be in society. You know, that you don't put your elbows on the table or whatever it, whatever it is that the things that you learn as a child so that you can have manners and be polite and get along with other people and, 
you know, the things that some people get and some don't, or yeah. some people are taught and some are not. But just the fact that they're not taught them creates their solid reality, mm. right? And then they interact with the other people who do know that stuff, and then they don't get along. That's it, it all starts from there. We get our own personal experience of what the world can be from society, from mm. school, from politics, from religion, from our family, the tribe, the first chakra, the, the energy of the collective births us in, okay, to the group. And then the group teaches us in one-on-one -on -one relationship, second chakra, how to be in mm. this physical environment. But again, we're spirit first. This is the result. So this is just, we're in a vehicle. Spirit has agreed to come into a vehicle for a temporary period of time in order to learn. Yeah. So as you're doing that, while you're here, what are your tools? The dreams are one of them. How do you, how do you understand them? You understand, well, first you understand that they're not just you. They are the script of literally everything that mm -hmm. came before you. Yeah. All the way back to the Big Bang. Picture the Big Bang as a canister of fireworks. <laughs> okay? And it explodes. And what happens? All the little points of light go out in all different directions, like a giant sea anemone. You know, just the, the arms going off. That's an arc. That's a mathematical principle. Everything in the universe is mathematics. Yeah. That's why people like Einstein are so important. Because they got that underlying all of this was an energy, an intelligence. That's God. That's spirit. Yeah. When you put dogma on it, when you put text on it, and you humanize it, you lose the pure essence of it, which is just energy. Yeah. Everything at its core is energy. You, you put this table or this, you know, your hat under a microphone, a microphone, a mic I'm, I'm, microscope. I'm looking at a microphone, yeah, under a microscope that's powerful enough and all you see is empty space. Yeah. So the only thing disconnecting us is the concept of physical reality. Yeah. Dreams, when you go in, are the opposite. You have no such physical reality. You have the constructs within physical reality so that you have a scene, so that you have people. So again, so you can see a, a movie and mm -hmm. learn from it. Yeah, but what so you happens have an if, interpretation basis. That's really exactly the, right. You have something to interpret. And then the symbols themselves are in context with your experience. So I love cats. Mm -hmm. Okay, but someone else is allergic to them. Someone else fears them because black cats are bad luck. Yeah. Somebody else worships them as gods. Yeah. So someone looks up a dream symbol in a book and it's got a static answer written by an author in a past tense because the book's already written and printed. Yeah. That person may not even be alive anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you're reading what their interpretation was based on their study, their understanding of history, their understanding of the particular symbol contextually and their personal point of view. And yet your personal point of view isn't theirs. Yeah. Your experience with a cat includes the fact that you just had, you know, you just rescued one and you had this wonderful, playful yeah. new animal. So you're getting that experience and that that emotion is playing wow. into the fact that you've had that symbol into your dream. So the symbols themselves evolve. They are completely unique in the context of the dream itself when you have it. Again, keep it in the present moment. And yeah. if you've had it before, how is this one different? Mm. How did this change in this moment so that you can learn from the contrast? Yeah. Even if it just changed from the way that you feel about the different things, exactly. right? Exactly right. It, and so that's really good because that's what I always say to people. I've taken some dream interpretation things from the psychological aspect mm -hmm. for helping clients, but um, not, you know, but I, I've always said to people, it's, it's, it's your, it's, you know, how do you feel yeah. about that particular element? What does that mean to you? Because yeah. like you can't, you know, like looking up in that book, like you said, is the static answer of like a butterfly means transformation. Yeah, maybe. But are it you can. Free, but are you free? It can out? also it can also mean extinction. Yeah. It can also mean beauty of color. It can also mean travel. It can yeah, also, it can also mean it things. could also mean that you were like uh, mystified by the the butterfly migration that happened in 2020 or whatever, it, it you know, when spring. Like, I mean, there's like, so like there's many there's different th things that it could be. Yeah. And, and when you allow yourself to put your interpretation in that, what is that you get a better clarity. Mm -hmm. So I like that. That's, that's, that's more on the same common ground there through your, you know, way more experience interpreting dreams. Um, so, but some of those patterns or those symbolisms that you see that, you know, is there some storylines that occur that are pretty 
on point with certain periods of people's lives or represent oh, absolutely. something, something absolutely. that, you know, like if, if there's any that you could share, I mean, you shared about, um, you know, the, the idea of a repetitive dream having um, a pointed origin that if you can figure out what that message is and why that message continues to rattle that person over over weeks or months or yeah. years, mm -hmm. um, you can clear it because yeah. you can hear for that. It's a it's a message, a repetitive dream from my my uh, very short kind of interpretation of that would be a repetitive dream is a message that is banging on you to understand. Yeah. And when you get that, you can move beyond that, yeah. right? If you have the dream again after you get the message, it's because there's more of the message in the dream you haven't got. Mm. And, um, or you didn't fully take in the message, right? Let, let's say how, it's a, how often does somebody hear right, a message exactly, and they're like, yes. yeah, I get it. And then they don't really get and it. They don't and, really get it. And then they, it has to repeat again. And they're like, wait, no, I got this already. Maybe not. Yeah. Maybe there's a shade of difference here that you didn't understand. Or maybe you heard it, but you didn't get it. Right. You know, which is very different. Yes, exactly. You heard, but you weren't listening. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Or let's say you have a dream that you have only one time, but it stays with you. You can't forget it. Like you yours. Yes, exactly. I was three. You know, some people, they'll have it when they're a small child. They'll have it when they're in high school. They'll have it when, you know, the one in college, when you're, you, you're not prepared for the test or you show up to the class naked or whatever. You know, all these stress dreams around... Um, the idea that something is left undone or that something is blocked. Mm -hmm. um, you have the dream one time, but you can't get it out of your mind. Yeah. That's because you never got it. Yeah. And the universe is still saying, if you would just think about it, if you would just look at it again with new eyes, your, your example of the butterfly, you know, I tell people just hop onto Google. It's the best, um, or, or a search engine it doesn't have to be Google, but just hop online and just type in butterfly and go to Google Images and just look at all the different images. Find one that really clicks with you and then click on whatever that website is, click on it and then see what it says in the text. I guarantee you there will be something there you needed to learn you didn't know before. Hmm. Because your intuition knows where to lead you. You just haven't been paying attention to it. I like that. Okay, so sometimes when you see something in a dream, um, you, you can try to find or pull yourself into that. Yeah. And, and use the tools and Absolutely. while you're guided, you know, yeah. what, you know, which, which makes perfect sense. You know, sometimes people like my dream about, I don't know, a certain, certain name or this or that they Google it. It's a book and they re read that book and, yeah. and they're, they're drawn into a whole new world or it has this aha where it leads them to a different career path or something. A character in your dream goes by a particular name that you don't know anybody by that name. Look the meaning of the name up the next day huh. because that name historically has an origin. Again, what's the, et what's the etymology of these things? What, how, how did they begin? Where, what was their starting point? Does mm -hmm. my starting point seem similar? Is this past life? Going back to the fireworks and the, and the, and the arcs extending yeah. out, you're the little point of light at the end. Everything that came before you is the ash behind that trail. Yeah. That's your ancestry, that's your evolution. And it's like a hologram. If you look at a hologram, uh, closely enough, what you see is each individual bit of the hologram contains the entire picture. And then it's some fragment of it, like an icon on a computer as opposed to the full image. Yeah. It isn't, it isn't necessarily clear, but it's all there. The same is true of every bit of information that pertains to your lifetime, this time, that came before you. Well, so, even, even on a science level, right? You can pull one little cell and ha and look at the DNA exactly within right. it and, and the DNA encodes all of the blueprint of you. It's the same concept. It's just that it's, it's, it's etheric instead of physical because everything that came with you, your bloodline comes with you. That's physical, but so do, you know, the ailments that plagued your ancestors. And more than that, the thought patterns that caused mm. those ailments. Interesting. So you've now inherited un finished business from people you never knew mm. from the fish that first crawled out of the ocean there's some level of that that's why when you dream of things that you don't understand what is this scene i was never in this place i don't know this i've never been to this place i've never been in this house how do i know this it's because either you are tapping into the collective consciousness and you're understanding something that someone else has seen or like a radio signal yeah or it's in your DNA. It's literally scripted in your amorphous DNA. And it just comes up through the process of the dream. It's like when you defrag a hard drive, when you take 
all of the files out of your computer and you close all the opened applications that are slowing it down to speed it up you have to close those things you have to you know uh, toss out the trash and, and empty mm -hmm. it yeah and then the computer runs more smoothly it has more memory it has more access to the information it's faster yeah that's true of our mind that's true of our spirit and part of the way that we get there is through the examination of our dreams because our dreams give us that data dump that's mm -hmm. when you have like a dream that makes no sense. There's no story. It's just flashes of images and you move from one scene to the next. It doesn't seem to make any sense whatsoever. It's not linear. There's no yeah. movie plot. It's just images or sounds or, or people saying stuff that you don't even necessarily understand. I call that defragging the hard drive. Yeah. Because venting. you're literally just venting out memory from your cell tissue that has no meaning or purpose in this lifetime so it's crowding the files yeah or no longer holds true like i do a lot of hi hypnotherapy work yeah, yeah. and and that's you know i always let people know they're probably going to have some very intense dreams that make no sense or yeah. or even if they make sense and they're it's an attachment to something because they're letting it go they're you know that dream is quite the opposite mm -hmm. right you know mm -hmm. it's like let me get all of the stuff that we just cleared and rewired in your brain out of you you exactly, know exactly exactly and so right. you're saying that that sometimes that your brain just does that periodically and saying okay i need i need data dump i'm ready for all this new experiences and new expansion that's coming my way exactly exactly oh, that's beautiful. it's emptying space for more things to come in you can if you had a vase with flowers in it and the water was dirty you would, you would, even if the flowers were still alive, right? You'd take them out and you'd trim them and you'd put in fresh water. Yeah. And then they would grow again. Yeah. Okay. It's the same thing. Your, va your, your water has to be clear. Yeah. You know, your, your container has to be empty in order for you to put new things into it. So that includes ideas. Mm. That includes interpretations. And remember, an interpretation is just that. Well, you know, we spoke about Freud and Jung earlier. It's not to say that either one is right or wrong. It's that each had their own view. Yeah. And then what's my view? What's your view? That's the conversation. Yeah. What is my earthbound view and what does my spirit think about this? What am I not getting that my spirit's trying to communicate to me? What can I then communicate to someone else because my spirit told me? Yeah. And speaking of communication and spirit, you know, uh, you mentioned that uh, in our in our intake form that mm. you can use the dreams to actually get in, in touch with or connect or communicate with those that have passed over. Absolutely. Can, we, can you share a little bit sure. about that? Sure, absolutely. So the, um, I'm saying absolutely a lot. The, um, the person who's passed, if it's family, they are literally scripted in your DNA. The illusion that they are gone is based on the belief that the only thing about them that carried them was their physical body, which is mm. untrue. Mm. Again, this is just the vessel. Yeah. If you take water and you pour it into a vase, and then you realize that wasn't the vase you wanted to use, you grab another vase, you can pour the same water into it and it'll perform the same function. Yeah. The same is true of spirit and a body. Okay, so when the, when the body itself is worn out, it seeks a new one. Whether that be, you know, it decays into the ground and the worms in the earth or whatever, or it becomes an, an animal or another human, you don't leave the vessel and just disappear. Mm. Energy is energy. It cannot be destroyed. It's, and again, this is not religious. This is just spirit. It's just yeah. energy. It cannot be destroyed. It can only tr transmogrify. It can only change from one thing into another. The same is true of the person you know. So your belief that you're disconnected from them is believing that their physical body is all there was of them. Mm. And yet you still want to pray to them. You still want to ask them for help. You want to ask them for guidance. Who are you talking to? You're talking to their spirit, their energy. Yeah. You know, for if there's an atheist watching this show, I'm not saying that there's, you know, a white man on a cloud answering your prayers. I'm saying that Energy is energy and everything is connected. So if we're all energy at our base and we aren't solid, yeah. when you get far enough down, what separates you from the person who died? The mm -hmm. answer is nothing. And so who they were in this lifetime still exists in you physically and in the space around you. And that's true of people that you may never have met in your life. Let's say that you like a particular uh, movie star or, or singer and you followed them all their career and then they pass away and you're devastated because they've added so much to your life. 
you listened to their voice through their work and you mm -hmm. connected with them or a painter or a sculptor and you were so immersed in the experience of knowing them through their work and then they're gone. You have already assimilated enough of their energy through that work. Yeah. You know, in the case of an actor or a singer, you're hearing their voice. It literally changed your physiology to hear their voice and process it through your system. They live inside you. Mm -hmm. So for as long as you're in this container, you have permanent access to them. They do not go away. Your understanding of separation is nothing more than your belief that you are separate. You are not. Gotcha. So as soon as you let go of that false belief, then the question is, why aren't you connecting with them and how do you do it? Mm -hmm. So what I tell people is write out an invitation, make a card or go to the store and buy one and literally get an envelope and a card and write on it what you want the dream experience to be. Your mother died. Okay, mom, I know you only have love for me and I miss you. I would love to see you and talk with you. Let's have tea and conversation. You're welcome anytime in my dream state. Love. Okay. You close the card, you put it into the envelope and you put it under your pillow. And every night before you go to bed, you pull that out and you read it. And every morning when you wake up, you pull that out and you read it and you watch what changes and then contact me and we'll talk about the interpretation of that dream. I wow. guarantee you, I guarantee you it will change your experience. Interesting. And the power of right before you go to bed and right before you wake up, because those are your most suggestible states too. Exactly right. You know? Yeah, so. when you're in that nether region between yeah. waking and sleeping, yeah. And so to program that and see and then, you know, do it repetitively until it happens, until it shifts, because mm -hmm. sometimes it's a, you know, it's not a, maybe one time it pushes you over the edge, but sometimes, it, you know, you might need to keep on putting that coin over, like, mm -hmm. you know, the, the arcade game where the coins are sticking over oh, the edge. Oh, yes, You yes. know, it's like each one, it's getting closer, they're pushing out a little further, they're about to fall over, but which one is it going to be? What you a know? great metaphor. I mean, picture that. Think of each of those coins that's keeping you from getting all the way up there, yeah. right, as one of your thoughts. Ah. And you're literally pushing them further and further. further and further. And as you do, you get richer and richer because uh -huh. that money is coming to you. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it, what, what's keeping you from it is the belief that the machine is slow. Yeah. And that you have to wait. Yeah. Why do you have but, to but wait? Really, if you, but really, it, it could be just one. It goes whoosh. And they exactly go. right. You could just tilt it up and they all fall in. Yeah. The, the thing that keeps us separate from those who have passed, again, is the belief that when their physical body left, that all of them left. Mm -hmm. They're not in that container anymore. You can't hug them the same way you did before. But you can hug them in a dream. And you can talk to them in a dream. You can talk to them during the day. You know, the belief that dreams are symbolic and this is reality is also nonsense. Mm -hmm. This is only reality in, in, in as much as we have solidified it for ourselves personally. There are physical things. This table is solid. If I hit my head on it, I'm going to feel pain. Mm -hmm. But that's because I'm in this agreement that we're in physical consciousness. Once I step beyond that and just go into the dream state, all of that no longer applies. I can hit my head on that table and my head can literally, you know, get a divot in it from that and then bounce back like it's rubber. Yeah. What's, what's to keep it from doing that? That's so cool. Now, I ha I, I'm going to ask this because I've, I find this a lot of times. You know, I've, I've had uh, spiritual centers that I've owned for 13 years now. And I've seen when people get really, mm, let's say, addicted or like, you know, like pulled into the meditation state, right? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. where they kind of lose track of this physical reality. Yes. And it's, it's like they're, they're so with this higher connection that they <laughs> suddenly stop prioritizing their yeah. responsibilities, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, do you find that that sometimes happens when people get the keys to their dream state? You know, like that they want to like dream more because of their, that there is no, you know, like they can hit their head and they can bounce back. They can start to learn to, you know, to have all these other experiences. Has that ever happened? Like everything else in life, there's an ebb and flow to it. Yeah. So it's more likely that you're going to go through a period where you're like a little kid with a sparkler yeah. and all you're going to want to do is write down your dreams and interpret them. Mm -hmm. And then at some point life is going to happen mm -hmm. and your attention is going to be pulled elsewhere. So it has kind of a fail safe to it. I okay. mean, you could conceivably get into that. Sure. I'm sure there are people out there who do nothing but pay attention to their dreams and miss their waking life. 
But that's so th- not, that, that's what I would say. Yeah. yeah, it's good because I mean, it, it you know, it sounds so cool. There's so much more information. You can do all this stuff. But you again, can, the, you, the information you, relates to your waking yeah. state. You need to keep. Again, it's your earthbound self talking to your 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 um, spirit self, your higher self. So, in order for you to um, really utilize it to its maximum effectiveness, you have to engage with your waking state as much as you do with your dream state. What yeah. you're doing is you're taking what you learn from your dream state and waking it up. Yeah, which is what meditation is all about. Buddha said when he was dying. They were like, how, how are you? And he said, I'm waking up. Hmm. And that's true of every day of your life. What are you waking up to? What are you bringing with you from where you just were? Remember, you're in a different place in that dream. You're in a different state of consciousness. Now you're coming back to this one. Think of it like ocean waves. Okay. Hmm. There's an ocean wave coming in. That's the dream state. Well, then where's the other one going out that was at the beach a moment ago? Oh, it's receding. That's the conscious state. And in the morning, it reverses. Mm, that's a good analogy. Okay. And, and occasionally, it brings things with it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly uh, right. It washes up starfish exactly or right. shells yeah, or, or, or tin cans or whatever. Or, and occasionally, a whole whale. And, you yeah, know? <laughs> exactly right. So you never know what's coming with the new wave. But what you do know is that as they pass over, they connect. Mm. There's that moment before you wake up where the dream is so ultra clear and then it's gone in an instant. You think for one second, oh, this is no problem. I'll write this down. And within three seconds, all of it's gone. Wow. Because you've literally transferred from one state of consciousness to another. And the dream itself went out to sea. Yeah. The same way at night, consciousness, waking consciousness goes out to sea. So they relate it's yin and yang. You can't have one without the other. So do you recommend that people have dream journals then? Yes, absolutely. And I would recommend instead of using a pen and paper, because that again, that's physical. You, you grab a pen and you, you, you put it to a pad, that's physical. You start to write, that's physical. You've literally pulled yourself out of dream consciousness and into physical consciousness just by the thought of, oh, I have to get a pad. Boom, here's my hand. Here's a pad. Here's a table. Here's a pen. Now I can write. How many things have you done that's physical? Dream's gone by now. Mm. Keep a digital recorder by your bed, okay? Uh, or use the voice memo on your phone. And you just click the record button and talk. That's the fastest way to do it. And then you can transcribe what you said later. And you'll find you have more detail. Because that snippet that you spoke, connects your conscious state to your dream state and allows you to recall more. Ah, I like that. That's a, that's a, you know, yeah. a good strategy that I haven't actually heard before. Mm-hmm. Everybody always talks about dream journals and keep them next to your bed and yeah. write it and all down. And some people are great at that. I had you one know. woman who used to come to me with a legal pad with like 20 pages yeah. of her dreams from the night before. Yeah. And, and, and she had it all detailed and written out. Not everybody's a writer. Mm-hmm. And, and I, and I like how the simplicity and keeping it more into that dream state is like the, the less things that you have to do in order to get there mm-hmm. and the less you have to physically like kind of think because, you know, when you do write, you know, it's you know, you're thinking, you're processing, you're yes. moving, you're doing all this other stuff. Yes. Whereas if you're just talking, you're, yes, you're bringing it into existence, but it's less, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. less resistance. And, and, and the less resistance, the more you retain and the more you retain that you bring into the waking state. When you re-examine it, the more will come back to you about the dream. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very effective tool. Again, this is this is three decades of experience of talking with people and walking them through how they do it. I mean, I don't have to wake up and interpret my dreams. I am able to lucid dream interpreting them as I go. So let's talk a little bit about lucid dreaming. That's where a lot of people, I mean, it's a buzzword. People talk about it. They're like, you know, oh, (laughs) lucid dreaming, you know? Yes. Um, So that takes a little bit of practice. And you kind of touched on it before, but let's describe what that is and why is that something that could be of a benefit to people. So lucid dreaming is being able to change something in your dream. You can direct the dream. Mm -hmm. You become the... um, Francis Ford Coppola of your dream or the Martin Scorsese uh, or the Quentin Tarantino, depending if it's a nightmare, (laughs) Um, that you have the opportunity to 
um, look at the script, not be happy with it, and say, you know what, I would rather be on a beach in Hawaii with a cocktail, you know, with a piece of fruit in it and, and a hibiscus flower in my hair and just relaxing and watching the ocean. So we're moving from this to that. Okay, how do you do that? Well, the first thing you have to do is let go of the belief that you can't. The reason people don't lose lucid dream is not because you have to get from here to there. It's because they believe they're here and not there. Yeah. There is no pause. You can lucid dream tonight if you put your mind to it, but you have to be open. You have to already be on the path where you are open to the experience that you are in control of your own power. Well, again, you can only do that in the present moment. If you're distracted by your stresses, past or, or, or future, you're not in the present and you're not going to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. If you're in the present, why can't you lucid dream in this moment? Yeah. Which it, I would, one of the things that I'm thinking right now would be one of the biggest benefits to that mm -hmm. is breaking that awareness and opening up that consciousness to people that if they can believe that they're, if they drop that, the belief that they're not in control or that they can't in a dream yeah. and they know that they have the power and they can move from one state to let's say the beach with, you know, the fruity drink or whatever yeah, and, yeah. and move there that, you know, the reality of life is not too much different. You know, it's, yes. a, it's, it's these blocks that we have that we feel that it's hard or difficult or it's not possible for yes. us or it's going to be more challenging. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times we don't try or we don't do or we don't create. But if you're doing that in that dreamlike state, I would like to think that that would mean a correlation to a belief of more empowerment in the in the awakening state. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And that that's the point. If you believe you can't lucid dream and that you then need instruction in order to do so, or you need a, a timer app on your phone that beeps every once in a while to remind you to think, I can lucid dream. You, again, you're relying on an external source to dictate your own physical and, and spiritual power. Yeah. Your physical body, your mission control is spirit. The mind is the translation center. The body is the result. So mm -hmm. if it's your spirit and it's in your body, it already knows how to lucid dream. You don't need to go to someone else to learn that. You can. And I'm not saying don't because yeah. I don't want to like put lucid dreaming teachers out of work either. Yeah. You need that sometimes. You need yeah, it, you maybe know, the you, guidance in that. But we, we buy crystals because we want to connect with a specific energy around an emotion or a power mm -hmm. that we feel for some reason is weak within ourselves. It's like picking up a, an iron weight in order to build a muscle. You need the tool in order to be able to begin on the journey. That's okay. Yeah. Talismans are useful for us. I'm not, I'm not putting any of that away and saying, why aren't you just believing this? Yeah. Just the opposite. I'm saying, however you get there, get there. But understand that the power, it's, it's Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. Yeah. She had the power all the time. She just didn't know it. Yeah. All she had to do was click her red shoes together and she was home in an instant. And P.S. the whole thing was a dream. Yeah. Okay. The power was within her the whole time. Everyone gravitated toward her. Yeah. The witch wanted the shoes. Glinda wanted to guide her. The scarecrow, the, the tin man and the cowardly lion were her companions, but they, they were people she met on the way. And instead of staying where they were, they followed her. Yeah. Because there was some wizard in the long run that was going to be able to give them everything they didn't have. And yet, if you read the story carefully, the scarecrow is the smartest. Mm -hmm. The tin man emotes more than anybody else. And the cowardly lion is the bravest. <laughs> and Dorothy, who keeps wanting to be home where she's safe, and familiar with these people. If you look at the movie, all the people who play those characters are people in Kansas in the first scene. The farmhands become the three companions. Mm. She meets the wizard, right? Remember he's in his, his wagon, right? And she meets him along the way before the twister that sends her to Oz. Mm. All of these images in her waking life come to her in this dream and they are her companions along the way to get her back to her origin point. Learn the lesson of that. That's your life. Beautifully said. That's your life. Ah, oh, I love that. Yeah. And she, without realizing it, 
was lucid dreaming because didn't she guide so much of that dream? Yeah. Didn't she pour the bucket of water on the scarecrow when he was on fire? Mm -hmm. Didn't she eliminate the wicked witch in the process? Mm -hmm. She fought her own demons. She was the helpless damsel in distress looking into the crystal ball and seeing Aunt M calling for her, where are you? And she was feeling that I can't get back to you. And yet mm -hmm. she had the power the whole time. And in the long run, they guide her, they help her, but she still determines her own fate. Yeah. And it all brings her back to the power that was with her. Within her in, to bring herself to where she wanted to be. The same is true for every one of us. Yeah. And it lies in our dream state as much as it does in our waking state. They are one and the same. They just happen on different levels of consciousness. Mm. So good. So good. Thank you. It might be a good place to kind of end for today, but okay. I would love for people to know where they can find you. Yes. And I'm sure this has been activating a lot of people's uh, curiosity, wanting to dive in more. I mean, everybody has had an experience of dream and people that don't dream as much desire to dream and people want to know answers to why they dream what they dream. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I think that that all goes into like you're saying is they want to connect with that power inside of them and yes. realizing that. You know, how do they get there? How do they activate that so that they can live that life of fulfillment, mm -hmm. of joy, of full expression? Yes, yes. And that's what's waiting for them. And by doing that, set the example for other people that it can be done. Yeah, so they, um, can, they can be the one that walks in the room and changes the whole energy yeah. you know and, and, and you know and how that, people like that are they walk in and you're like what is it about you yeah and then the opposite is true when somebody's a down demi downer and they're like and they're like a negative cloud yeah. it's like everybody's having fun laughing and they come in the room and it's like Ooh, I, my skin's crawling i need to get out of here exactly. so like you know don't be that be the other and strive to continue to have that ripple effect be more precisely right be the be the person that everyone else is drawn to yeah. And if, you, if you're somebody who's an introvert and that sounds too uncomfortable, at least do it for yourself. Yeah, but then vibration can be, you I mean, know. Even, even the, the introversion itself might change at that point. But understand that you have within you the power to wake up whatever your purpose is here. It, you can still be an introvert and write a book. Yeah. Or, or, or compose or, and, a song. And, and even go to a gathering. You just maybe you're more off to the side, engaging with one or two people, but it doesn't mean that your energy doesn't permeate the whole space. And if right? you're an extrovert, you know, uh, sometimes you need to calm it down. I mean, yeah. both are true. We learn from each other. We learn what the boundaries are for people who need them. And we learn how to navigate within that. You know, sail, sail your ship and don't hit the land. I love it. Come up alongside of it and, and then, you know, and dock. It's, it's a different experience. Allow the water, allow the river the ocean, the current, to guide you. Don't move against it. Move with it. And, and allow yourself to be taken by where spirit guides you. Mm. You know, the times you need to, to go against things, even then, spirit is guiding you. So, so pay attention to that. Know what's right for you, what's healthy for you. If you're involved in something to the point where it's taking all your energy, it's not healthy for you. You need rest. You need to sleep. You need to dream. You need to connect with yourself to be fully healthy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. there's no place like home they can tap those red slippers at any time exactly right so in answer to your question i uh, so i'm in california for a month yes so it's currently june 13th i'll be here until july 8th mm -hmm. uh people here can contact me um through uh, my website, everydaysymbology.com mm -hmm. or stardreamscafe.com i will be at the tarzana Community and Cultural Center on the 30th. I'll be doing a talk on dream interpretation there Beautiful. live. Uh, they have a new uh, speaker series called Tarzana Talks, and I'm their first, their premier speaker. Beautiful. And um, thank you. And I will also be performing at um, the Garden Pavilion in Hollywood on June 26th with singer songwriter Harriet Shock. Beautiful. So I'm very much looking forward to that opportunity. And um, I will be available for private sessions and card readings. So please contact me. Yeah. Uh, you can email me at jefferson at everydaysymbology.com. And you do a lot of your sessions remote. So it doesn't matter where people are exactly in the right. world. You know, they can connect, they can share, they can. And do you do some of your workshops in, uh, remote as well? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And uh, so uh, you can, you know, connect with me on Instagram and Twitter at Jefferson Harmon. 
You can connect with me on Facebook, Jefferson Harmon LaSala, and you can, um, you know, certainly email or call me. My number's on the website, and I would love to hear from you. I can do a phone consultation. We can do it by Zoom. While I'm here, we can meet in person. So, yeah, whatever's, whatever's there. Awesome. Yeah. Well, please, if this is of any curiosity to you, you know, dive in and learn a little bit more because it sounds like it'll be a journey into learning more about yourself. I thank everybody for joining today. Like always, you know, we like a little love, like, subscribe, you know, all of that fun stuff. And if you're listening or watching this on YouTube, uh, really, we're trying to get our YouTube channel up a little bit more. So a quick little comment helps a lot. You can, you know, like and subscribe, all of that fun stuff. But mm -hmm. a comment, take two seconds, write something, and it will help the algorithm so that we can help reach more people. And if you're listening to this in an audio format, eh, same thing, always can grow. Thank you so much. And until next time. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. It was a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in, in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self, you are S E L F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free. <laughs>